definite integration is a kind of mathematical process that can be performed as numerical method. For example, look at this function y equal to f of x. The value of the integration of y which is bounded from the value of x equal to a until x equal to b. This definite integration equals to the total area under the graph of the function between the two limit. By numerical method, we can estimate this area by totaling up many many small strips of trapezium that we cut through the parallel lines in between the area. Some numerical method approach will use rectangular shape for addition but using trapezium will give a more accurate result faster. The smaller the strip width will give us a more accurate result. For example, this trapezium, trapezium of A, C, D, B, the area is the multiplication of the width and the total of the two sides. For trapezium, the two sides are not the same. So we first multiply the width with the total of the two sides and then we take the half of it because this division by 2 is actually taking the average of the two sides. The two sides actually the value of the function of x at the point where the left side standing on the x-axis and the right side where it is standing on the x-axis will give the value or the height of the trapezium on the right side which is equal to the value of the function of x at that point. And the width is actually the step. The closer we step, the smaller the width. But we need to step more, of course. So we can call this as delta because it is an addition to the previous value. We can also call it step or width also. And then while calculating the individual area of the trapezium while we are stepping across the integration area, we will have to accumulate each of the trapezium area into a variable that will keep the total of the integration. It looks easy now. Let us do this coding with C, C++. Start your IDE. Begin your C++ coding. Then next, you need to decide on how you want to define your mathematical expression function, like the name and the argument. You definitely need to return. And for this demo, I'm doing an integration on some kind of log function. So I'm calling this log. You have to rename this depending on the problem you have to write. And the problem that I'm writing is like this. a plus log x plus b. x plus b is in bracket. So in this case, a and b are the coefficients. You need to decide what are your coefficients. Coefficients are variables that we put together with the independent variable in the max expression. So in this case, it is a and b. Y is the dependent variable, the one that will get the return value of this function. So let me continue. I will put only two input to this function, which is a and b. So the type is because we want to allow our function to be able to calculate values on numbers with fractions. So then it's easy to get the calculation. You can either straight away return 
the calculation if you are already professional enough. Even though I wrote that as log, but this is natural logarithm. So let us see what functions can we get from the standard library to calculate log. And as you can see here, we also need the value of x as parameter. And in this case, I have to use log. And if you can see here, this log and this log looks almost the same, but they are different because C is case sensitive. But this is not a good naming because human being will always confuse this spelling. There are just difference in casing. But anyway, I'm going to let this like that. We still have problem here, log. Actually, it's because we need to include C max actually. Then you can see, I can now call the log function, the standard library. Let me check again. So it is shown here, log will be natural logarithm because the standard library already have log 10 for logarithm base 10. This format is if you're already quite confident with your programming, but if you are not so confident, you can do this stage by stage. Let's say you can declare a double first. You can call it second term. And you assign with the value of log x plus b. Then you can return a plus second term. This style is up to you. As long as you get the right calculation, it is acceptable. And then in C and C++, you need to declare functions. So let us declare. I will just copy and paste the function header. In function declaration, you don't have to put variable name. I mean, in the argument or in the input, but you need semicolon at the end. In function header, there is no semicolon, but in declaration, there will be semicolon. And that is it. Next, we need to define what we want to do in the main function in terms of doing the definite integration. Inside the main function is where we implement our definite integral algorithm using summation of trapeziums. So if you realize in, you will be repeatedly adding the area of the trapezium, which means here you need a for loop. Just write the for loop there. It needs a starting point or starting value. Maybe we still use C as the loop parameter in this case, but C has to be declared as double because it has to be started with a start value, which is the lower bound of the integration limit. And as long as C is less than the stop or the upper bound of the integration limit, it is not only stop in this case, we actually need to stop before we reach the upper bound as much as the stepping that we take or the delta of the integration or the width of the trapezium. In this case, I'm calling it delta. You can have your own naming. And then the stepping now is not as simple as C++, but we have to add delta to it in my case. So you can see here, we have to declare all this delta, stop and start. Let us declare this. Then now we have to call the function that we want to integrate. In this case, or my case is the function of a plus log x plus b. Why do we have to call this? Because we want to get the value of y at x and the value of y at x plus delta x instead of using y or y delta, I would like to use the name as left side of the trapezium is log 
that is left side then right side and the problem here is that these two variables are not declared yet in this case these two variables don't have to be initialized like these three variables because these two variables are to be given value in the loop so initialization at declaration like this is a waste of computing power then we have the value of y at x and x plus delta we need to compute the size of the trapezium which we call it area of the trapezium then we have to total up the area of the trapezium into another variable so that we can accumulate it into the final definite integration we may want to call it total or total area up to you this is the accumulation we accumulate by adding and this one has to be initial because we are accumulating the area of trapezium inside this variable it has to start with a known value which is in this case then it's better for us to make the printing for this whole computation we print f we print the step by step of it maybe we print x equal to 1 percent f and then area is what and then the total is what at this stage we match it and we want to print it one more time after the loop because the actual answer or the final answer will be printed after the for loop stop that might not be printed during the for loop execution okay you can see here c is undefined because i define c inside for loop which means i cannot use it outside the for loop so the best solution is not to define it here i mean not to declare it there we declare it outside doesn't have to be initialized so i have passed the, in the compilation let us see how it runs so the final answer of the definite integration is 352.424706 you can check this from online definite integral calculator you can google online definite integral calculator and then perhaps you can choose this one then put the equation that we are integrating let me put the limit first then the equation is 15 plus log base e of x minus 15 the final solution is 45 ln 5 plus 2 45 multiply by 5 long plus 280 we get 352.424706 which is exactly this one so the code is correct